Good morning, everyone. I, I, I want to start by just showing you, sorry, if we can go back one. Uh, I want to start by just showing you kind of why we started Zipline. About five years ago, I was uh, spending time with the Ministry of Health in East Africa, and we were on our way out to deliver uh, a pretty big uh, supply of medicine to a hospital. And instead, we got stuck. It took us about three hours to get unstuck. It, it's actually hard to even see all the people who are helping us. You might notice there's someone really camouflaged on the right-hand side of this screen. Um, it took us about three hours to get unstuck, and we had to turn around and go back to where we come from. And as a result, the hospital that was waiting for this medicine and the thousands of patients who are depending on it didn't get it. Uh, unfortunately, this is not a, a rare occurrence. In fact, 5.2 million kids die every year due to lack of access to basic medical products. And so coming out of that experience, it seems so obvious to us, why don't we build a logistic system that can work for every part of the world and that doesn't depend on roads? And that's what ultimately led us to create Zipline, which is building an instant automated logistics system for the planet. We use about a 35-pound electric airplane that flies itself uh, to deliver medical products instantly to hospitals and health centers across the country. So what we do sounds a little bit like science fiction. And I think often when I talk to people, people are, are skeptical. So let me only show you what we're actually doing today. So this is the country of Rwanda. Uh, today we deliver a, a, up to about 25% of the national blood supply of the country using autonomous aircraft. And we're doing all of that from a distribution center that we build and run. That's the Z in the middle of this map. And from that distribution center, we're delivering blood to a majority of hospitals in the country. Uh, and the reason that blood is so important is that 30% uh, of the, the recipients are kids and 50% are moms. So this is a product that is really, really important for families, but it doesn't last very long. It's complicated. There are many different types. It's cold chain dependent. So this is actually the largest commercial autonomous system in the world. And by the end of 2018, uh, actually just this week, we are doing first commercial deliveries from a second distribution center. That's the Z on the right-hand side of the screen. We're expanding from serving about 21 hospitals to 35 hospitals and 500 health facilities. Those are the little gray dots. They might be hard to see. And we're also going from delivering just blood products, about 15 of them, to over 150 different products, so the majority of medical products that you'd need in the entire healthcare system. And the long-term goal of this is to put um, each and every one of the 12 million citizens of the country within a 15-minute delivery of any essential medical product they could need. So that means that by the end of 2018, Rwanda is going to be the first country in the world to have universal access for healthcare for every person in the country. So do you guys want to see how it works? <laughs> So this is what we build. These are called zips. Uh, and this is just taken on my cell phone, so it's not very fancy. But uh, this is a zip going, making a delivery to Cub Guy Hospital. When we're making a delivery, we descend to about 35, 45 feet. And we're delivering using a really simple uh, package with a paper parachute. Uh, and the plane will actually autonomously estimate the speed of the wind, so we're able to deliver into a very accurate mailbox, which is kind of like an imaginary rectangle on the ground. Uh, this is basically means that the, the, the experience of ordering something is super simple. You send a text message and get what you need 15 minutes later in order to save a patient's life. You can see these women are like, what the hell did we just see? <laughs> but interestingly, you know, it, it, we thought that uh, community acceptance was going to be a challenge. Uh, it turns out we couldn't have been further from the truth. People today in Rwanda are like, yeah, of course we have drones that deliver blood. How else would you solve that problem? It, it's amazing how fast it goes from science fiction to totally boring and entitled. You know, a lot of people ask, wow, you know, why did we want to do this? Did they do it because, you know, it's fancy technology? And actually, the, it couldn't be further from the truth. It, typically, in healthcare systems, you have to balance uh, access against waste. So if you want to improve access, you send a lot of medicine to the last mile, but then a lot more medicine expires and vice versa. But the, the cool thing is that in our, in our partnership with the government, we've actually been able to reduce blood waste in Rwanda at the hospitals we serve from 7% which is hugely expensive, over a million dollars uh, uh, nationally, and that's about an international average, to 0% at the hospitals we serve. So Rwanda became the first country in the world to actually achieve a 0% waste rate on blood products. And they, they did that while actually increasing access to a bunch of blood products by 175%. So this is like awesome, because the system gets more efficient uh, and you're able to improve access simultaneously. And obviously this is not just about the system benefits, this is also about human lives. And to give you a sense for what this looks like, 
Uh, a couple months ago, a 24-year-old mom came into one of the hospitals that we serve, and she gave birth via C-section. But there were complications during the procedure, and she started to bleed. Now, the doctors immediately transfused her with two units of blood of her blood type that had been delivered via Zipline's routine service, uh, but she bled out of those units in about 10 minutes. So in that case, that mom's life is in grave danger in any country in the world, including in the US. But luckily, her doctors uh, had been trained, and they were able to pick up a cell phone and immediately place uh, emergency orders. And the distribution center did delivery after delivery after delivery. We ended up sending seven units of red blood cells, four units of platelets, and two units of plasma, all of her blood type. That's more blood than you have in your entire body. And the doctors transfused all of those units into her, and they saved her life. And she came and visited us a couple months later with her older child. So that's not just one story. I mean, Zipline has actually, over the last 12 months, done 1,600 emergency, like life-saving emergency deliveries. And there's a story like that behind each of those deliveries. It's not just about the lives of the people who are receiving those transfusions. It's also the lives of the families who depend on them. So let me just really quickly let you actually hear from our team and the patients who, have, um, who, who Zipline serves. Zipline is divided into a different team. We have the flight ops who carry about pre-flighting plans, packing, loading the packages, and make sure that plane can fly. And then we have health ops. You can include more of the people with the knowledge of the blood product. We make order to Zipline by using SMS or by using uh, WhatsApp. The package is handed to flight ops. We scan the package, and that's when we put the vehicle on the launcher. The vehicle will fly autonomously up to the hospital. We can avoid expiries, we can avoid stock out because the supply chain has improved. Blood is life, but it is saving life. Rwandans. So, well, let me take you for a really quick tour of the distribution center. So this is Prosper. He's one of our flight operators. Um, this aircraft has been loaded with blood that's headed out uh, for a delivery to a four-year-old boy. From the moment the plane leaves the end of the launcher, it's completely autonomous, and it's accelerating from about zero to 100 kilometers an hour and a half of a second. And then we obviously, we don't have landing gear or runways where we operate, so we have to do the, the opposite when the plane is coming back. So we have to decelerate the plane from 100 kilometers an hour to zero in about 20 feet. Um, as you can see, this plane's actually coming back from making a late night delivery. <laughs> so, <laughs> this might be hard to tell what's actually happening here, so we can watch it in slow-mo. This is basically a combination of an aircraft carrier and a bouncy castle. <laughs> and we have about a three-foot target below the vehicle that you can see there, and the line is actively controlling to the vehicle to decelerate it and then plop it onto this uh, bouncy castle. And uh, this is how we're able to land hundreds of flights a day, day in and day out, um, in a way that people can rely on with their lives. And we monitor all these flights. Obviously, air traffic control is really important. We have many different planes in the air at one time. Uh, so this is, again, shot on my cell phone, you, showing our iOS interface that our team builds from scratch. You have two planes going out to make a delivery to the same hospital, in this case, Nianza. They're both about uh, 50 kilometers away. And you can see this plane status is delivering. It's just about to make a delivery to this hospital. There it just made a delivery, and now its status has changed back to inbound. And we're actually receiving data from the vehicles over the cell network. We actually buy a family plan for all of our vehicles because that's how we get the best rate. <laughs> it's not a joke. Uh, and one of the funny things is people look at us and they think of us as a drone company, but the reality is you know, our customers don't care about drones at all. Uh, all they care about is does something go from point A to point B fast enough to save someone's life. And in, in order to provide that service reliably, We've had to build the avionics, the flight control algorithms, the air traffic control software, the vehicle, design the distribution centers, and then we operate them. So we're a full stack company. Um, but the advantage of doing that is that we can iterate very, very quickly on the technology. So actually just this week, <clears throat> 
we're updating the entire fleet of aircraft uh, to a totally new design. And this new aircraft is going to allow us to reduce the cost per delivery by about 5x, which is a really big deal for our customers. Not only that, but we redesigned the distribution center, and we've just upgraded uh, both distribution centers that I showed you in Rwanda uh, uh, to the new hardware. The new distribution center will allow us to go from making 50 deliveries a day to about 500 deliveries a day. And we're currently iterating on the product in this way about every six to eight months. And just one more example of, of how quickly we can move. The flight control algorithms have improved so much that we've been able to uh, reduce that capture window from about three feet to about one centimeter. This is actually, this, I took this on my cell phone in Rwanda last week. This is the first successful commercial delivery of the new aircraft. You can see the tail hook's actually gone, so we have about a one centimeter target on the aircraft. Yeah. Um, and this is now how the system is operating uh, right now, while, while we were sleeping. I, you know, a lot of people look at what uh, Zipline does and they think, wow, that's amazing philanthropy. But n actually, nobody gets how great of a business automated logistics can be. You know, we sign contracts directly with governments where we get paid per delivery. Uh, and these contracts, even just delivering a niche number of medical products in countries, are profitable. It means that the distribution centers are uh, economically scalable. And we think that that's really important because we want to build this as a global network and serve billions of people. The other thing that the new technology is enabling us to do, that the, the new iterations of this product are actually work on much more ambitious programs. So just last month, we announced a, a very large partnership with Ghana uh, to build four distribution centers and then eventually eight, serving about 22 million people in the country, uh, making it build leader in autonomous logistics globally. And the neat thing about uh, what we're doing with Ghana is that these distribution centers actually form a logistics backbone. So we can move products from one point in the country to any other point in the country in like three to five hours. So it's essentially a class of logistics that has never existed before. You know, people often ask, what is so special about or how, how has Zipline accomplished what a lot of people thought was impossible? And the answer is our team. And one of the things that surprises a lot of people is that the team that is operating these distribution centers, they're entirely local. So this is the team that runs our Rwandan distribution center. It is a uh, extraordinary team of Rwandan flight engineers and flight operators. And they have been able to do what some of the richest technology companies in the world have tried to do and failed. And that is something we're incredibly proud of and a total narrative shift to, to, to how, I, how I think people in the US think about technology. And in fact, just last week, we announced that, we are, that, that in partnership with the Department of Transportation, Zipline's going to begin doing commercial deliveries in North Carolina of, uh, of medical products to rural uh, areas. So this is kind of an amazing uh, uh, <laughs> paradigm shift from, you know, I think we often think technology goes from the U.S. and trickles its way out to other countries. This is an example where the U.S. is now actually learning from Rwanda and trying to catch up. So, so I'll just, you know, end with a quick thought, which is a couple months ago, I got to go visit the Mayo Clinic, and I was blown away. It's, it's the best hospital in the world. They have the best doctors, the best medicine, the best diagnostics. Um, and I was really struck by, A, how cool that, that hospital is, and B, how different that experience is than the way that most people on the planet experience healthcare. This is the hospital that most people go to. This is a health clinic in Tanzania, as an example. And Zipline's long-term mission is to turn every clinic in the world into the Mayo Clinic by providing better access to logistics and better access to medicine. So today, it is possible for robotics and autonomous vehicles to, to, to provide instant automated logistics at a global scale. It's going to be possible to move products around as quickly and efficiently as the internet moves information around. But we feel very strongly that the long-term impact of that technology is not delivering your tennis shoes or pizza. We think that the long-term impact of that technology is providing universal access to healthcare for every human on the planet. Thank you.